Hi everyone and welcome back to how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. This is also the sixth episode on how to make an inventory. In this episode we will first fix a little bug and then I will show you how we can swap items in the inventory and make them stack correctly. And now let's get started. Okay, let's handle the little bug first. When we run the game as it is now and open the inventory and click on an empty slot, then it might seem like nothing is happening and everything is fine. However, if we go to the Godot editor and look in the debugger, we can see that we get some errors. Now, the yellow ones here aren't really errors. They are just warnings. But at the bottom, we get the new red errors. If we click on the first one, the editor will jump to where the error happens. Apparently, we try to remove a child that doesn't exist. And if we click on the second error, we can see that we also try to add a node that doesn't exist. Mm, well, this is because we shouldn't call the take item from slot function if the slot is empty. So let's go fix that now. In the onslot clicked function, let's change the guards we already made. We could fix our problem by adding more to the guard around the call to the take item from slot function. That does seem to be the simpler fix for now. But since I already know what we'll be adding to the function later, I will choose to change the first guard, the one around the call to the insert item in slot instead because this fix will make our life easier later in this video. So, instead of checking both if the slot is empty and that we have an item in hand at the same time, I will change this into two if statements. First, we check if the slot is empty. And inside this if statement, I then check if our hand is also empty. If this is the case, then we return without doing anything else. And then we insert after this and return. With this fix, we are now sure that for all the rest of the function, the slot will have an item in it. And now let's test again. Open the inventory and click on an empty slot. Now we can see that the error no longer happens. Okay, so now that we have fixed our little bug, let's get working on our new features. First, still in the inventory GUI script, let's create a function for swapping items. We already have most in place for this, since swapping is really just taking and inserting an item. First, let's take the item in the slot, but don't store it in the item in hand just yet. Instead, we store it in a temporary item variable. Then we insert the item in hand in the slot we just emptied. And finally, we set the item in hand to be the item we stored in the temporary variable and add it as a child of the inventory GUI. We now need to call this function from the onslot clicked function. First, let's add a return after calling the take item from slot. And now we can safely add a call to our new swap function at the end of the onslot clicked function. And now let's test and see how it works. Okay. Swapping was easy enough, but what if, for some reason, the item in hand and the item in the slot is of the same type? Wouldn't we want to stack them instead of swapping? That's what we will look at now. But first, let us put some things in the player's inventory that will make it possible for us to test the different scenarios that can occur. So, 
open the player inventory resource and add a few life pots to it. In my game, I've made it so the max amount of life pots that can be stacked in a slot is 10. I need to make sure that I have life pots to test three cases. When two combined is less than the max, when two combined is the same as the max, and when two combined is more than the max. This makes it possible for us to test that the code we'll write is covering all three cases. Okay, now let's go back to the inventory GUI script. Here we add a new function for when we want to stack items. I first find some data that we'll be using to decide how we should be stacking. I create a variable to store a reference to the item stack GUI in the slot we clicked on. Then I dig a bit down in this to get the maximum number of items of this type a stack can have. And finally, I calculate the amount of items the item in slot and the item in our hand have combined. And now we can move on to handle our three cases. First, I check if the slot is already full. In this case, we don't actually want to stack items. We can just swap them as we did before using our swap items function and then return. And now let's handle the two other cases. First, if the total amount is less than or equal to the maximum amount. In this case, all the items from the hand and the slot can fit in one slot. So we just update the amount in the slot to be the full amount. And then there's nothing left to hold in our hand. So we remove item in hand from the inventory and set the variable to null. Finally, we move on to the last case, when the total amount is smaller than what can be stored in a single slot. In this case, we fill up the slot by setting the amount to the maximum. And then we change the amount for the item in hand to be what is left. Now that we've changed the amount in the slot and or in the hand, we then also want to update the GUI items. So they show the correct amounts. That's what I'm doing here at the end. Remember that we might have removed the item in hand, so we check if it exists before updating it. Before we're ready to test how all this works, we first need to call our new stack function from the onslaught clicked function. Just before we call the swap function, let's test if the name of the item in the slot is the same of the name in the item in our hand. If this is the case, then we call our stack function and return. And now let's test how all this works. Remember, we have three cases to test. One, where the total amount is less than the maximum amount a stack can have. One, where the total amount equals the maximum. And one, where the total amount is larger than the maximum. Remember to also test that everything works if we close and reopen the inventory and that everything is still correct when we collect new items after swapping and stacking. 
whoops, something really isn't right here. Some of the items we've stacked are back at their original position after we picked up new items. So let's fix this bug as the final thing for this video. The problem occurs because our inventory model isn't updated correctly. And there is a few ways we can fix this. But honestly, I just think that the way we've updated the inventory model so far isn't the best when it's possible for swapping items. At the moment, we only update when items are inserted into slots. This was fine when we couldn't swap. But with swapping and stacking, I feel that we need to change the solution so it deletes an item from the model when we pick it up and add an item when we insert in a slot. Okay, so first we need to make some changes to the inventory script. Here we first remove the first two lines of the insert slot function because we no longer want to remove the item when we insert. We want to remove in another function. For this, we change the remove item at index function. First, I just rename it to remove slot. And it then takes an inventory slot as input. Here, we then find the index where the slot is located. If it's less than zero, then the slot isn't in the inventory model and we can just return. Otherwise, we clear the slot by creating a new inventory slot at the index, just as we did before. Finally, we need to make sure that we insert and remove at the correct times. So let's go to the slot GUI script. Here, we call the insert slot function correctly in the insert function. What we then need to do is also called the remove slot function from the take item function. We can do this right before we remove the item stack GUI from the slot. And now everything should be set up correctly, so let's test again and see how it works. And that was all for this episode. I had also prepared to show you how to make an item we've picked up return to its last position when we left click. However, to keep these videos on point, I've decided to make two separate videos instead. But don't worry, the next video will be out next week, right after Christmas. If you like this video and want to see more like this, then remember to like, subscribe and all that. Bye!